So I want to start with, as always, questions from homework, and then we were going to uh, transition into looking at the practice final. Um, here we go. I'm going to wait for a few more people to show up before I make some announcements. Anybody have any questions from homework in the meantime? Yeah, I do. Yes. Um, okay, so on assignment 4.8, some of the uh, questions ask you to graph out some of the things. Is it okay to screenshot uh, a Desmo? You know, the totally. Place? Okay, all right, cool. Yeah, I said you could do that. Or if you have a TI calculator, you could do it on the TI calculator. I, have you know one, I don't know how to use it. Yeah, no worries. Um, since we made this course, you could either take 160 or 120, and 120 does not require a graphing calculator. Uh, if we only made this course go into 160, then we would have made a graphing calculator required for this so we could teach everybody how to use it. But anyway, anyway, so. Um, Anybody else, any other questions from homework stuff? I've got a few more people come in now. All right. Oh, I lost somebody. Damn. Oh, well. All right. I'll, I'll say this. Here we go. They came back. All right. Wait a minute. They're connecting. Okay. Tomorrow, I will have office hours, but there will not be class. I have a meeting that starts right at 9 a.m. So I will log in at 8.30 a.m. if somebody wants to come by and ask some questions. I will have my extra office hours later that day, tomorrow. Is everybody with me? Today is Wednesday, right? Yes, okay. Who knows anymore what time means. Um, tomorrow's also the quiz, right? This is, I pretty much just said that, I think. All right, so be with me. So no class tomorrow, but I will be here for office hours at 8.30 if you wanna stop by. Uh, and then I will have I will be here for extra office hours later that day. The quiz will be due Friday. Um, I don't know. Wait, when did I, didn't I make four, eight homework due sometime? Did I not do that? Do, 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 do. I thought for sure I did. Yeah, four eight's got a due date. Four eight was due yesterday. And you can still turn it in today, obviously, but um, I'm gonna try to finish grading that all that up because the, the quiz tomorrow is four three through four eight. So I've graded a decent amount of that, except for the most recent. Oh, it's it's there. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I might, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Let me put it in there. You can see it in your to-do list. If I forgot to put it, yeah, I forgot to put it in the module. Okay, I understand. Let me put all those in the module. It's all these little steps that I'm not used to having to worry about. So now you should be able to see 4849410 in the module. Uh, that's my mistake. So I create them and then I forget to put them in. It's like, good Lord, how many steps do you want me to do? All right, how's everybody else? Everybody with me? Okay, anybody not with me? Maybe that's a better way to ask that question. Any questions from homework? Anything come up while I was yapping away? I have a question. On 410. So when you use the quadratic equation, once you get the answer, is that for the X? Yes, okay. Yes, that's for the in. I love that so much. You just vanished on us now. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's a little obvious on my side because yeah, and I, I rebooted my stupid router this morning. I'm hoping my Wi-Fi is okay. Uh, 
Google Fiber, what the shit? Would you please come to San Diego? Um, I've heard good things about ATT, but I've heard horrible things also. So screw them. No, anyway. ATT anyway sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but so does every other option. So, <laughs> all right. Well, that was exciting. I'm so happy that's happened, and my entire class is still here. I'm always concerned if I get booted out, everybody else is gonna leave. But oh, well. all right. Uh, what was I saying here? Uh, yeah, when you do the quadratic formula, the result you get will always be values for the input, whatever the input is. And of course, normally it's X, but like the very first problem on 410, the input is T, the input is time. Okay, so then the other part of it would be zero, correct? And then it'd be plus or minus? Yeah, so, so it'll be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what do you mean plus? Wait a minute, wait a minute. So oh. once you finish the quadratic formula, you get two numbers, right? You do? What's that? I'm so confused. Of course you do. Uh, let's do an example quadratic formula. Let me see. Let me find myself some white space here. Where are you, white space? There we go, some nice white space. Okay, here we go. Let's do an example quadratic formula. Uh, let's see, 5x squared plus 3x minus 10. Right? So what's A, what's B, what's C? What's A? 5. What's B? Three. Three. Let's see. Ten. No. Negative ten. Yes. So then X equals negative B, give or take, give or take. It's going to give you two answers. Square root of B squared minus four A C all over, where'd you go? Twice A. All right, is everybody with me? All right. Negative, oh, Jeff, negative three, give or take, square root. This will be nine plus, uh, what is that, 200? So 209. You guys with me out there, right? Nine, there was a minus and a minus, that'll be a plus. 20 times 10 is 200 plus nine is 209 over 10. This is kind of a gross one, right? But then I get, I so I get negative three plus square root of 209 over 10, that's one number. And I get X equals negative three minus square root of 209 over 10. That's the second number, one number, two numbers. Got it, okay, so <laughs> got me now my question is how can you have negative time is it ah. just fictional or um what did you call it like a fake i can't remember you called it something extraneous solution or um i don't know what word they might have used in the book but don't they ask about that i thought for sure they asked about that because math doesn't give a shit if something is negative so I can do a problem where I'm trying to figure out how big of a shed I want to make. And math will say, oh yeah, make this side negative seven feet. And we're like, math, go home, you're drunk. But that's because the number works, but I have to throw it out because it doesn't make sense in the physical world. So I want you to realize, um, I thought for sure they asked the question in the, in the work. Let me see if I'm remembering incorrectly. Uh, or maybe it was earlier. Yeah, it was probably something earlier. Damn it. But watch this. So if I, oh shit, there we go. If I have a parabola, remember if I throw it, then I'm actually standing. So it actually starts here, right? Math says this equation keeps going. So right here, why does it not make sense to let the equation keep going like this? 
because there's the ground. Yeah, somehow this thing is burrowing into the ground. That would definitely make baseball more interesting. They didn't catch it. Oh, it's in the ground now. They're going to have to dig after it. Oh, shit, here we go. So that doesn't make physical sense, but math says this function keeps going. But we go, no, we can't use any of that. What would this mean? This would mean if I continue backwards in time, <laughs> right? But of course, it, that doesn't exist because this is where things start. So math says that's good. And we say, that's nice math, but we're talking about real world shit. So we got to cut it off here and we got to cut it off here. Does that make sense? Yes, totally. The graph of a function doesn't know. It doesn't know yes. shit. We have to impose as the humans. Oh yeah, graph, stop there and stop there. Thank you very much. It was like if it was to exist. Yeah, if, so for example, this could be, I could be laying on the ground back here and I throw the ball, but I don't start to keep track of it until right here. So like this could be my, this is when time is zero. Uh, I got a great example here in a second, but if I go backwards in time before when I started to keep track of it, it still makes physical sense because I actually threw it from the ground. But this, how about this? Has anyone ever watched the shuttle launch? Uh, you know, on the TV. I used to live in Florida, so I used to watch them um, in real life. But has anyone watched it on TV? And they say T minus 10 minutes. All right, that's negative time because they don't start counting time as zero until the damn thing lifts off. Right? So there's a, a, a kind of a real life example of, of negative time, which really just means it's before we want to start tracking something. Right. I don't know if any of that was actually helpful at all, but it's just, it's that place where math, we have to make it make physical sense. We not make it make physical sense, but, but identify where the math makes physical sense. Because the math is going to go outside of making physical sense. It, it allows for things to be negative length. It allows for negative time. Because it, it, it just thinks purely numbers. And we have to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want a shed that's negative. What is that, a black hole? What is that? If I put my shovel in there, so am I ever going to be able to get it back? Don't, don't be making my shed negative feet, all right? Is everybody with me? Uh, yeah, the always, thing makes sense. Somebody would always tell me the answer to some problem would be, yeah, you make the shed negative seven by negative 10. I'm like, make that shed for me. Can you please? And then take a picture because I don't want to get anywhere near it. I don't know what. Anyway, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right. Anything else, guys, that I can just riff off of for a while? Everything else is okay? All right. As somebody pointed out, these last couple of sections are a little more intense mathematically, right? Which is why I try to build in a little bit more time here at the end, right? We actually did less stuff per day the last few class meetings. But if nobody has any other questions, we're gonna go start looking at the practice final. Uh, hello, Professor. Could you please explain the problem number one in section 4.8? 4.8. Holy shit. That's almost perfect. Oh, all right. Um, so this one, recall that revenue is price times number of units sold and number of units sold is X. So revenue is X times price, right? That's what they're saying. Yes. And what is price? P equal, yeah. 
So just uh -huh. plug that in. Yeah, and then so put that there and then go ahead and multiply that through. Go ahead and distribute that X. Got it. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's that substitution idea. If I know the general approach, revenue is X times price, then I can just substitute whatever the price is and, and do it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. How's everybody else? Anything else, guys? So just to remind you, the quiz is only on 4.3 through 4.8. Um, 4.9 and 4.10 will be on the final. Uh, let me see here. Here we go. So there's that practice final exam. Uh, here is good old homework sheet showing you four three through four eight is the quiz tomorrow. I like it. So if you go to here and grab this bad boy. I wanted to let you look through this and see if there's anything you wanted to look at specifically today. Does this sound familiar? Yeah, I was looking at that. That's the Venn diagram where both of them, we were talking about one. So they just want us to draw that out. Yep. So part A is can just to make. Practice, can we do a practice one on one of those? Well, that's, of that's the practice one right there. Yeah. So here's what we can do for today. This is this is the options. I'm going to open that up again, but in a better way. Um, these are our options for today. We can pick a few of these out, work them together. Um, we can, if you want to do this on your own, uh, I can figure out another problem to do, maybe take one out of the book. Um, but this is our practice here. I am going to have the answer key for this. Right. So we could even if if you wanted to try this problem out right now, and then we could do it yeah. together. Yeah. So it's kind of up to you guys how you want to approach this, what problem you want to look at, and, and, and how you want to do it. So let's go ahead and do this. Everybody wants to play along. Try to do this first problem. I'll sit here and, and just be really useful and wait, and then we'll do it together. Actually, let me, I'm gonna step away for a second. So what is it you have to be careful about? If you call this one, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, drive, and you call this one public transportation, 
why can I not just put 163 here? You yeah. should be counting the, the people that dropped in both twice. Yeah, so the first thing I would put down is I would put 25 down. That is the thing I know for sure. Where does that go in the picture? Where's 25 go in the picture? In the middle. Good. Now the whole P circle has to total 40. So what goes here? 15. Good. All right, keep going. Sorry. So make sure you guys, that's the thing you gotta be careful about is you do have to kind of think about things. It's better to start on the very inside and work your way out. All right, let me catch up to you guys. What goes here? 138. Good, 138. So now I can double check. Do I have 163 total? Yes. In the D and I have 40 total in the, in the P. What goes out here? Either. So, um... 72. And how'd you get 72? One second. Eight minus two fifty. The total. Oh, yeah, two fifty. Yeah, the total here is is one seventy eight, and then two fifty minus one seventy eight, seventy two. Is everybody with me? What are these seventy two people? What are they doing? <laughs> Neither. Walking? Yeah, they don't drive to school or use public transport. So either they walk or they Bye. have the power of flights or they instant transmission or something, right? Or they get a ride. And then the, huh? Or they, oh, get or, a ride. or they get a ride from some from one of their friends. I got you. So how many of the students only drive their own car? That's easy now. 138. 138. And how many don't use either form of transportation? That's easy now. 72. 72. All right. So that's not bad, right? You just got to remember the little tricky thing about this number tells you what should totally be in that circle yeah. here and here. So you have to be careful there. All right. I like it. Anything else look interesting? Huh, sir? Yeah. I was off a little bit on that. I'm glad I said go over it. Because I was kind of trying to wrap my head around it. But yeah, that middle number, it gave me the rest. Yes. Thanks. So you, that's, you always want to start in the very inside if you can. That'll keep everything else going the right way. So, so there's a situation where you couldn't? Well, you I, I couldn't could possibly... I could possibly give you the information where I don't tell you this. Uh, it would, yeah, I don't know. That's possible. Okay. Where you have to figure it out. Um, I could do that. That would be a little bit evil, but it's not impossible. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Anything else look interesting? Do you guys just want to go through this step by step, or do you want to? Um, it's up to you guys. Definitely sure. Step by step is not bad. Step by right. step is not bad. And what's everybody Better. else saying? Huh? Better like to review like most of them. 
Okay. Step, so step by step is better, Professor. Certainly. Oh, somebody's got a suggestion for number four, but we'll, we'll get there in a minute. Yeah, number four is a nifty one. I don't know if anybody does model trains. Um, I don't, <laughs> but uh, you could. If you needed to estimate the value of the square root of 30 without using a calculator, right? How would you figure that out? What could you say? I would accept a couple of different responses. Does somebody remember how to do that? And I don't know why that symbol kind of died halfway through. All right. All right, so now you gotta explain your reasoning. So it's not five, five is not a good guess. Between five and six, well, whole number, right? So six. There you go. Oh, which whole number would you, I'm sorry, I didn't even know. Which whole number would you say it's closest to? That one's a little bit evil. So yeah, why would you say, well, you could say between, I think you just said it. Between five and six, but it asked for a whole number. Yeah, and and so this is a little closer. more, this is a little more subjective. So which one do you think it might be closer to? I'm saying five, because it's five away. All right, this is interesting. Six away. Right, so 20, square root of 25 is five, square root of 30 is, 30 is five away from 25. Square root of 30, what, six is six, and that's six away from 30. So you might think it's closer to five. Can somebody go ahead and do the square root of 30? Here, I'll do it too. Five point four seven seven. It's about five point five. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, five point four seven. So it is just barely closer to this. I like it. Right. Okay. But the main thing to remember there is you can always estimate a square root by just taking the closest number to that that actually is square rootable, right? So we've discussed that. So if you had to guess what, for example, the square root of 63 was, well, that was that would be really, that would be just below what? Square root of 63 would be just less than? Eight. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because square root of 64 is eight. So square root of 63 is just less than eight. So if I had to guess, I would say 7.9 or something. We'll see. Are you guys remembering that? So that's the idea, and it came up a couple times of estimation. Estimation is a, uh, a skill that as teachers, we don't hit on it often enough because the better you can estimate, the better you can tell if an answer makes sense to, a, to any problem, right? Um, I got too many people doing a problem and they tell me that the eraser costs $300. And I'm like, what does that eraser do? Uh, something went wrong. I think you misplaced a decimal or something, right? Is it pretty cool with that problem? So, I mean, that kind of estimation of radicals. So if you're going to explain your reasoning, would you say that it's only at a five away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you wanted to explain it the way Vu just did, you could say that, that it's only five away here, and this is six away. Exactly. I like it. Hey, Mikey. Now, now real quick, I don't want to make this too complicated, but um, let me see. Let me think. Hold on, hold on. So for example, here's where this kind of breaks down. Square root of 16 is four, right? And the square root of, of 36 is six. What's right in the middle of 16 and 36? Can somebody figure that out? It's not too hard to figure out. What's right in the middle of those? 26. 
But what's the square root of 26? Is it right in the middle of four and six? No. Square root of 26 is like five point something, blah, 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 whatever the hell it is. Why does it not work perfectly? Because square roots are not linear. And again, I don't want to take this too far. I'm sorry. I just want to say a little bit more about this. Square roots, if you graph them, they actually look like this. They are not linear. So that's why this kind of reasoning isn't perfect, but it's decent for an estimate. That's all I want to say about that. I don't want to make that overly complicated, but just to give you a complete picture. All right. I saw some pained expressions. I'll stop. What about number three? Can anybody see a problem with number three? All percentage. He has way too much fun. <laughs> yeah, who is this person? <laughs> they obviously, uh, I don't know, a quarter of his budget on rent, they probably don't live in San Diego. Um, what's the bigger problem though? 10% isn't on there. 10% missing. All right. Which kind of makes sense because this is what he's spending. So what's that 10% then? Savings. Saving. Savings. I love it. Which is why I'm using a bar chart because what's the only time you can use a pie chart is if your categories all add up to be 100. 100%. You can't make a whole pie without all the pie parts. So we can't use that 10% because I'm assuming it's savings, but it could be something else. Who knows? Maybe he throws that out the window. You know. But this isn't too hard of a problem, hopefully, right? Calculate the dollar amount spent in each category. That should be relatively easy. Right? So could you figure out how much he actually spends on rent? He definitely does not live in San Diego. The 375? Yeah, it'd be a quarter of 1500, which is 375. That sounds right. Right. So it'll be, so she did 25%, so 0.25 times 1500. That's 375. Hell, my first apartment was 326 a month. And I lived in a in the basement of this place. Basically, I had the hot water pipe running across. I would hang my clothes on it <laughs> to have them dry. It was really interesting. Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, all I had to pay for was cable. It was perfect for a grad student. Holy shit. Um, that's rent, and then the rest of them work the same way, right? So food would be 20% of 1500 and so forth, right? This is the kind of problem you could just sink your teeth into. So I see a lot of ramen noodles and cheesy poofs for this guy, yeah. That was the, uh, that was I basically what- great I, ramen recipes. Huh? That's some great ramen recipes. Oh, there you go, yeah, dude. I had no idea. I mean, I was just buying the store stuff. And then all of a sudden, all these ramen noodle places opened up like, holy crap, that's the real ramen noodles? Dude, big old chunks of ham, yes. Anyway, so everybody with me, this, this problem isn't that difficult, right? You just got to remember for the next part how to make a bar chart. Anybody do the bills yet? Two twenty-five. I think not only does he not live in San Diego, I think he lives in a different time period. All right, bills and then and then fun, thirty percent on fun. 
I'm jealous of this person. 450. 450. I like. Now, when you go to make a bar chart, now I didn't say, and this is my mistake, but hopefully you understand. I kind of want this to be, to be money, not percentage, because you've calculated the money now. So you got rent. You've got food. You've got bills. And you've got, we'll just put that in quotes, fun. What kind of scale should I use here? What kind of scale should I use on the Y axis here? Anybody? How high up do I have to go on this axis here? It's a 1500. I, I don't have to go to 1500. I just have to go to 450. That's the highest amount spent, right? So maybe you can go by 50s. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400. You guys do a better job than I did of making a scale. Wait, 100. Two, three, four. Ah, oh, shit, I need one more. Dad gummit, Jeff. Let me get my arrows out of the way. Yeah, there. All right, so now you can just make the, so the rent bar will go up to 375. Bam, and then the food bar goes up to 300. Food bar sounds good. And then the bills go to 225. This doesn't mean that that's all of his actual bills. It's just what he pays. And then the 450, the fun bar somehow is way the hell up there. All right. So remember bar charts were useful for when this data is like names, when this data is not numerical. I don't know if you guys remember any of that. You guys doing all right? That's not too horrible, right? So now we get to the problem somebody actually requested, number four. What does this mean? So the O scale means the models are made using a one inch to four feet scale. What does that mean? One inch will equal four feet on the map? Yeah, one inch on the model. On the model. <laughs> four feet in real life, right? So, I mean, if I had, if, if there was something that was eight feet in real life, what's it gonna be in the model? Two inches. Yeah, two inches, I like. It. So can you guys figure this out? If I have rails that are four foot, eight inches apart, in real life, how far apart would they be in, on the model? I like this problem. You would, Jeff. Be quiet. One thing to realize is I cannot, using this directly, I cannot handle inches from like real life. So actually it's the opposite of what you're saying, Andrew. So how do I make four feet, eight inches how do I make that into something feet?
Divide the eight by 12. Yes. This will be four and eight twelfths feet. Eight inches is how short of being a foot, four inches short. So it's out of 12 inches, it has eight. So it's got eight out of 12. So it's four whole feet plus eight twelfths of a foot. Right, and again, that's another reason why if I said something was four foot 12 inches long, why is that dumb to say four foot 12 inches long? Because it's just five feet. Because it's freaking five feet. It would be four and 12 twelfths. Isn't that four plus one? Isn't that just five? But this is four and eight twelfths. Uh-oh. Right, which if you make it into a decimal, it comes out to be roughly 4.67, uh, right? Now, how do I convert that into inches on the model? I could do a conversion, that's one way to do it, or you can set up a proportion, that's another way to do it. So if you do it conversion wise, I wanna go from feet in real life to inches on the model. So where do I put feet over here, of course? Where does feet go here? The bottom. On the top, the bottom. Feet in real life to inches in the model. So I'm not gonna put 12 here because that's not what we're talking about. One inch on the model is four feet in real life. You could do it, Jeff. All right, and then you just divide. Or you can set up a proportion. That would work also. If you set up, so, so this would get you the answer. If you set up a proportion, it would be one inch on the model to four feet in real life equals X inches on the model to 4.67 feet in real life. And then you can cross multiply, do whatever you want to do. It actually ends up being the exact same math. All right, nobody's reacting in any way. So I'm gonna assume that's good. You can do it either way. And then, uh, I don't know, what do you get? Uh, four point, you get 1.16 something, 1.1. 1. 1. Yeah, 1.16 repeating. Ooh, I like it. So the rails would have to be about 1.16 inches apart to be true to life. Uh-oh, here comes a chat. 1.1, sure, 1.17, I love it. That works too. I put my little bar above there, but we probably can't be that precise in real life. Maybe even just 1.2. You guys all with me out there? So this is the point of this class is to try to give you more tools to pull out for a problem. So there were a couple of main ways to do this problem, both very good tools, a conversion approach or a proportion approach, right? They both end up being the same math. Okay. This is cool. If tomorrow, if today and Monday we just do all of this, then I don't have to make a video. We could just do it live. Do it live. Sounds good to me. Um, this one should really look familiar. Number five. Right, number five, we should just be able to eat that sucker up. So, so go ahead.
No wobble. Be afraid. No Be afraid. We start to catch up to you guys a little bit. This one kind of leads into this one. Why is a linear equation appropriate? What do you have to check? It, 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 the same number. And be really careful. I could be evil. I don't think I would ever do this, but make sure these actually go up by the same amount each time, right? So they do go up, as these go up by 50, these always go up by how much? 19.5. 19.5, so this goes up by 50, and this goes up by 19.5 all the way down. So this is exactly linear. So what is the slope? 0.39. How'd you get that? Dividing y over x. Good, so the change in y, which is the cost, divided by the change in x, which is the distance. So this will be money per mile, right? So you do get 0.39. It's not a bad idea, especially on this kind of problem, a physical problem, when you're finding the slope, don't just make it numbers. Put the units in there. So of course, what does this mean? It goes up 39 cents per mile. Yeah, so they have to pay every mile they go, they gotta pay 39 cents. On top of, you know, the, the cost to just get the damn car. Right, so they pay uh, 39 cents per mile. You can do it, Jeff, per mile traveled. Is there two L's in traveled? I don't know. Do you have to do any work for part C? No, but I did until I realized it's right there. Yeah, it's right there. So y-intercept, you can always tell us the y-intercept when x is zero. So the y-intercept is 0, 68.97. And of course, what does that mean? You have to pay that much money. No yeah, you got to pay that much money just to, just to be able to get into the car, right? So that's the base amount just to get the car, right? And then this is what you pay on top of that. So this must be a, a this must be a, a pretty decent car. You would hope. And now the equation of the line should be easy. Do I have to use this? No, you can just plug it into y equals mx plus b. Screw that guy! Yeah, you bunch of shit. I can use this guy because I know m and b. So I know m. 0.39, let's put a zero there. And I know B, 68.97, woo -hoo. And if I give you a problem like this, how can you double check this? 
plug in the miles into X. Yeah, so let's pick one. I'm, I'm gonna pick this one. So if I plug 100 into X, 100 times 0 0.39 is 39. 39 plus 68.97 is something. 107.97, which is exactly what I'm supposed to get. Yay! So you can always check the solution to finding the equation of a line. Just make sure it does what it's supposed to do. Right? Don't use the y-intercept when you check a line because that's kind of silly. That one zeroes that part out, so it doesn't really check the whole thing. All right. Ooh, this. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, this is the. This is the what I'm calling the gauntlet problem. Run the gauntlet. This is related to what we've been doing recently. Number six, and I sort of want to let you guys try that one on your own first, if you want to. We'll do. I'm going to do this one on Monday. Number six. All right. So this is kind of related to what we've been doing. And that's why it's got so many beautiful parts. Now, I'll tell you this, somehow I forgot. I do wanna have problems where you have to solve some equations, right? Remember doing that stuff? I mean, that shouldn't be that evil. Stuff like, you know, two times X minus seven plus three equals X plus five, right, right? Are you guys with me? I am gonna have solving an equation. I just forgot to throw it on this practice final. <laughs> Are you upset at me for that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody out there was like, what, Jeff? I'm sorry. At least I'm telling you right now, right? You got to know how they do this shit. So just know how to do it. That's all. And of course, here's the factoring stuff. Yay. I'm not going to forget that stuff. Uh, so number six, I do want to hold off on. I do want to let you guys get a chance to try it if you want to. Um, let me see, what time is it? We could do another couple of things and then we'll head out. Anything here you want to look at? You want to look at some, some of these factoring problems or you want to look at more solvent equation stuff or is there anything else in general you want to ask about? <laughs> This practice test is pretty much how the final is going to look like. Uh, you know, roughly. If you're able to do everything on the practice final, you should have a, a good time, a decent time with the actual final. Okay. Now, obviously, I could not make the practice final represent everything that could be on the final because then it would be about as big as the book. Um, because the final is cumulative, it's everything. So the practice final is not a bad thing to look at, to remember some stuff from earlier in the semester, but I would highly recommend looking at like the, the review problems from each chapter, right? Just to try some of those out, um, just to be ready. And I assume it's not open book, No, no, no. Just like every other thing. No open books, no open notes. None of that shit. All right. Um, if you guys have no suggestions, we can just call it, we can just say today's over and then we'll come back on Monday. Yeah. All right, let's do that. So today's over. We'll come back to this on Monday. If you can try a few of these out, your first priority is getting homework finished. Um, and don't forget tomorrow, I will be there for office hours, just no class tomorrow. Of course you can't use notes on the final, you can't use notes on anything. So if you have been using notes on stuff, well, shit. How many questions is it gonna be, Jeff? Uh, uh, the final for me, normally it's in the twenties, like 24, 25, somewhere around there. Um, and, and I'm counting ABC. You with me? I always say when a teacher's like, there's only five problems and they're A through J. 
So like this practice final is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's about as long as the actual final is going to be. The twenties. Again, we have two hours for the final. We will meet on Zoom and you will all have your cameras on. Uh, sort of like I think our first quiz went, if you remember way back when. Cool, anything else guys? Are you guys, uh, any questions? Are you all just not wanting to miss questions? Are you guys all right? What's going on? All right, I'm gonna head out. I don't see any questions. I'll see you guys later. Phone camera's fine, that's what I'm using. Bye everybody. Bye.